Hello, welcome to Geologia Geral, and today we'll talk about a brief introduction to the study of unstable isotopes. Studies of unstable isotopes are carried out on the concept that radioactive elements decay from alpha and beta particles in order to achieve their stability. One of the important things to know to carry out this type of study is where we find the elements for dating. Well, most of the elements used in this study are incompatible elements, a topic addressed in another video on our channel. Among the dating methods used are the potassium argon, rubidium strontium, samarium neodymium, and uranium thorium lead systems, all of them elements of the incompatible groups. However, even though they are generally classified as incompatible, these elements have varied compatibility with specific minerals and therefore, depending on the rock mineralogy, these methods can be used. After all, if there is no expectation of uranium existing in the rock minerals, one should not spend resources trying to use this method. Firstly, the isotopic studies consist on studying an isotope of a certain element, i.e. samarium-147, called parent isotope, that undergoes decay and turns into an isotope of another element, neodymium-143, called the daughter isotope. It is worth mentioning that obviously they are not isotopes among themselves, after all, they are not even the same element. This transformation occurs from the emission or capture of the previously mentioned particles. In the case of the alpha particle, it is composed of two protons and two neutrons and is then responsible for the decrease of four units of mass and two positive charges, for example, samarium-147, neodymium-143. The beta particle can be emitted or captured. In the case of emission, it happens due to a breakdown of one neutron into one proton and one electron, and then that electron is released by the element. In this way, there is an increase of positive charge in the nucleus of the element, but without loss of mass, for example, potassium-19, calcium-20. In the case of capture, one electron is captured by the element's nucleus, and it takes the opposite path, bonding with one proton and forming one neutron. In this way, there is a reduction in the positive charge of the element's nucleus, but again, without changing the atomic mass. For example, potassium-19, argon-18. In this way, ideally, it is possible to know how long the rock has crystallized or undergone some metamorphic processes, evaluating how much of the Dora element is in it. After all, the decay time has already been studied in the laboratory and is known, so if it were possible to consider that the Dora isotope did not exist in the rock and today it is possible to identify it in it, it means that it is the product of the decay of the parent element. However, as we will see when we study the methods individually, this is not quite how it works. These are the factors that determine the path of the decay, which element will be the product and which method will be most suitable for the study and dating of the rock. Terms like half-life are important for these studies and are widely addressed by other authors. But if you want us to make a video about it, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.